But twenty years in the Legion will make a boy a man. Twenty years in the Legion and they will give you land. Twenty years in the Legion you'll always have a home. Twenty years in the Legions of Rome. Good Monday night, Meridiers. Good to see you um, and our, our our flash screen. Um, welcome to uh, How Shit Works, the show where we look behind the curtain of how things run in Meridiers. I am, al as always, and one of your hosts, Graf Ulrich von Brandenburg. I am a knight, a pelican, and a royal peer, and I have opinions. You'll notice that the lovely person with me tonight is not the Knight of Kittens. It is instead the one, the only, Countess Sassy Pants herself, Countess Oda, Oda of Australia. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, of course, Countess Oda recently retransplanted into Meridiase, and uh, putting on guard makes me really excited to have actual events again one day. Um, I too have opinions, um, and you know, mm -hmm. I, I might actually be Eric in disguise. You, you never know. It's the hair. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, I've seen him in a red-haired wig before, so. It's true. It's true. <laughs> All right. Well, tonight's episode is the third in the Kingdom Officer series, where we will discuss the Office of the Exchequer, which uh, is a very important one in a nonprofit organization like the SCA. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> so our guests tonight are current Kingdom Exchequer Baroness Katya Milovskaya, and Maestrigis Karishtina von Ingen McCarthy, who is a former Kingdom Exchequer. Do you guys okay. like to introduce yourselves? Hey, Katya, do you want to go first as the current? Uh, sure. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Baroness Katya. I um, have been in the SCA since 1987, I think. Um, I started here in Meridiers. Uh, then I went the military and moved around a lot. I've lived in uh, Atlantia, Caid, the West, Caid, um, and back to Meridiers. Um, I am an associate with wonderful peers, um, Mr. Sponnet, Mr. Marcotla, and Sir Wolfston. I love all things music. If it's got music attached to it, I really love it and probably have done something with it. Um, and most times at events, you can find me with some instrument somewhere playing music, so uh, that's about it. Well, I'm Maestris Kirishida. Uh, I started in the SCA in 2000 and have always been in Meridiers. Been lucky enough to not get bounced around quite so much. Um, I, other than doing planning things, I really like fiber arts and that's where I spend a lot of my time, but I also like running uh, tournaments and events and things like that. Um, in real life, I have an accounting degree, so that has helped uh, immensely in trying to do exchequer things. Awesome. Well, both of you, welcome to the show. Uh, Baroness Katya, I'm very glad that you're here and you managed to travel the world and see it and come back home. Meridiez is very happy to ha happy and lucky to have you. Um, we're well, lucky. We're, we're completely uh, grateful to both of you for being on the show. Uh, right quick. As a uh, as um, Jess loves, I'm going to go off script for a second. I did kind of warn her about this. So there's a thing with names, especially uh, myself. Uh, for those folks who don't know, I am slightly dyslexic, and that makes it very difficult for me to read names in any way other than to pronounce them the way they are written. So I know that Karishtina's name is pronounced Karishtina, but if I look at her name. I will say Caristiona because that's how it is spelled on the screen. Uh, if I if I look at uh, Baroness Katya, you notice I'm closing my eyes when I say this. This allows me to know who I'm talking about. If I see her name on the screen, I will say Katya. So if you catch me doing that, I am not attempting to you know, slight them in any way. That's just a, a learning disability and a learning issue that I have. All right, that's out of the way. I did this with, with Izzy a couple of weeks ago and it was horrible. So what you're saying is that your drinking game should be every time you mispronounce a name? <laughs> no, no. 
I don't have that much alcohol in the house and I have a fully stocked bar. But speaking of the drinking game, nice segu nice segue. Um nice segue. Tonight's words for the drinking game are reports by Baroness Katya. Policy by Mestra Caristiona or Karishina. See, I did it just then. Um and don't touch the money by kind of sassy pants. So these things all have a story with them, I'm sure. Only two of them should possibly kill me. Um, don't touch the money should probably just be a good story and worked in every once in a while. Um, for the record, I'm drinking uh, cider and fireball in my lovely Firehorse Pottery mug, the Castle Dale Firehorse Pottery mug. There we go. Um, and uh, we'd like to thank uh, Between Two Peers for allowing us to be a licensed and um, authorized user of their drinking game. So uh, final disclaimer for the audience, this is how things work in Meridiers. Things in your kingdom may be different, though if there's ever an office that should be really close to the same, it's probably going to be the Exchequer. I would like to apologize uh, to the audience for my voice. I had sinus surgery five days ago. So if I sound stuffy, uh, I am, in fact. I hope you're recovering quickly and feeling better. I am. I, I'm doing well, but I know I still sound like there are things stuffed into my sinuses, uh, which is only partially true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess we should start at the beginning. So our first question is, how does one become Kingdom Exchequer? Obviously, it's not a job that everyone jumps up to take. It's quite a responsibility. So are there um, qualifications you're required to meet to be Kingdom Exchequer? Um, if so, what are they? And are they, you know, how do kingdom level and local level Exchequer requirements differ? Um, well, the only main requirements are you have to be a paid member and you have to be of the majority for where you live um other than that there's no technical requirements you don't have to have a background in accounting um it is um suggested that you have some familiarity with being a group checker but it's not a requirement um there are requirements what you can and cannot do once you take office you um, can't hold another office without permission from a superior you can't be a royal, you can't be a landed baron, um, you can't be in residence with them. And that's about, I think that's all. So other than that, there's a requirement that you're willing to do the job and put in the work. So. You're right, it is actually hard to get people to even apply yes. for the key notes taker. I was actually asked to take it um, I didn't apply for it. <laughs> and then I had a lot of asking people who, if they'd be interested. And I think I had to ask Katja several times before she <laughs> actually like really decided that was a thing she wanted to do. Um, but it is kind of hard to get people to even throw their hat in the ring. And once they do, they have to be approved by the King of Seneschal and the Crown, but then it has to go up to the Society Exchequer, who has to also be okay with this person, and then it goes to the board. So it is a more intensive process than some of the other officers might be, because they have to be approved all the way up to the board level. Um, just, uh, just for the record, the King of Seneschal uh, doesn't actually get a, a vote. They get a suggestion and an advice and a, you know, we think that'd be really cool. Or, well, they can but, say, I know things about this person that make them. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> actually, they, they do get input, but they, they don't get it. You know, they don't sign the warrant. <laughs> no. Even the crown does not sign the warrant, but they get to have an opinion. Yeah, <laughs> Some opinion. yeah, yeah they, they, they do. Know, the crown signs the warrant. Certainly a big responsibility of a job. I mean, it, it, it has to be done at the society exchequer level for the officially official stuff. I'm not saying the crown doesn't sign it at all, but the society exchequer overrules the crown right. in this particular case. 
All right. So we've talked about qualification. What's the process? You kind of covered it a second ago, but both at the kingdom and the local level. I don't know how, I mean, I only can make a, a guess at local level. Mostly it seems to be somebody take this before the, the Shire disbands. Um, but I've never been a local exchequer, so I'm not completely familiar with how they go about at that group deciding who should take that over. Uh, at least in my local group, it was kind of like, who wants this? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Until somebody's willing to volunteer. And then it goes to the Kingdom Exchequer to take a look and sign off on their warrant. Right. And then the only other requirements are also that, you know, again, they're a paid member. Um, they don't, they, uh, a signer does not live with them or they are not in residence with the Seneschal. Um, and other than that, I think it's pretty much also whoever wants to just take the job and do the work. So what you're saying is we need more people to volunteer to be sent or to be ex checkers and yeah. seneschals to the, that too. Yeah, seneschals. Uh, I don't yeah. think ex is quite as hard as seneschal. <laughs> I, I think know. almost every seneschal would disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, I, well, at least I feel like there's a there's an air of fear surrounding being an exchequer mm -hmm. because there's a level of there's something about financial responsibility that makes people nervous. Yes, it does. We're terrified of money. <laughs> right. Don't touch the money. Don't, damn oh. you. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to kind of address is you don't go to jail because you make a mistake. <laughs> People act as if, oh my God, I lost two cents and I'm going to go to jail. It's that's really not true. <laughs> it's not that bad. That's true. It is and not there, that there's bad. lots of fail safes built in for help that they can get before anything like that happens. It's not like if they do one thing wrong, they're in so much trouble. There's there's a lot of steps before uh, you would know it was coming. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of, you know, the things you actually deal with while you're the exchequer, um, what are the official responsibilities of the kingdom exchequer? So <laughs> yeah, basically you're the steward of the kingdom, kingdom's assets. Um, you oversee uh, incoming and outgoing funds. You make sure the debts are paid. You serve on the kingdom's financial and um, who actually decides how the kingdom's funds are used? It's not my job to decide how the money is spent. It's the kingdom financial or financial committee to determine how the money is spent. Um, and we also make sure the branches are spending their money for uh, financial policy. Um, we submit and publish the budget. We submit and publish uh, reports. Um, we and conflict resolution and arbitration if you have to. <laughs> and of course, General Cat Herder. Um, it, I, I think one of the biggest things I've done, anyways, is just cat herding. <laughs> so, we also administer to some degree MGT, you know, yes. the key level events. We, we have some responsibilities within those. And then there's other weird stuff like tax uh, forms and making sure people actually gather the correct forms. Right. But, uh, so there's a lot. There was a big list. I, I tried to narrow it down to the things that were important because I thought that would take too long. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was good. I thought that was a very succinct overview <laughs> of what you do. That was great. I think uh, one of the big things that gets done is the end of year roll up Doomsday report. Oh. <laughs> you said the R word. We don't have to talk about that right now, though, do we? <laughs> oh, right. Um, we'll have to talk about it soon, I'm sure, but not yet. <laughs> Unless you want to. Um, so I, I've been uh, reminded of a couple of different things that I forgot to mention. So part of the drinking game, if the word is part of the question, or if it is just something that is thrown in by our viewers, it doesn't count. We don't have to drink for that. 
but if we say it as part of our answer or it just comes up as part of our conversation, that's that's when it counts. The other thing was the drinking game is completely opt in. You do not have to drink if you don't want to. You do not have to drink alcohol if you don't want to. This is just for fun. Play along if you want. Don't play along if you don't want. We're all about having options and you doing what you want by your own consent. Don't be right. pure. No, no peer pressure, not capital P, not little P, no peer pressure at all. <laughs> all about the fun. As fun as we can make the exchequer job. <laughs> not saying that people aren't fun. You guys are, are, are a blast. I work with both of you outside of uh, the exchequer job. You're both a blast inside and out. Katya saved me several times. All right. <laughs> so I made sure that got in before this because what kind of reporting do you have? <laughs> it's... It seems like it would be the most detailed of the kingdom reports. And do you have deputies to help you with it? And if you do, what do they do? It's a lot there. So we have, uh, quarterly and annual reports. Uh, the quarterlies are pretty painless. Um, the end of year is the hardest because you have to report on detail on all the um, accounts in the kingdom, which includes all the local branches. So um, it is you have months to do it in you you start in january and you finish in march march 15th so um and i will tell you right now i'm still working on it it, it will be done probably march 15th at midnight <laughs> so um in mind that we only had events for like three months if that tells you anything about what it's like <laughs> right see i haven't got to do any of the other things i've just been doing you know placeholders pretty much and uh and it's still a, it's, it's a big report um so we do have regional deputies and they they do help they help a lot they the reporting deputies receive the reports at the local level and they check them out first make sure they're balanced if they're not they go back to the group and help they're kind of like the first stop uh for the local groups to get help um and then except tennessee who has to be different than everybody else so <laughs> but um, and then we have deputies for um, PayPal and regalia and uh, NMR. So there's there's a lot of help. It would be too difficult without them, I think. Well, my, I think we may have the most deputies out of. Except Harold's. I, I don't know how the Harold office works enough to know. <laughs> there's a lot of deputies. Yeah. So. All right. So you've got a large number of deputies. That's excellent, considering it sounds like you take on a lot of work. <laughs> so um, kind of to segue from that into um, what kind of guides your job. So we know there are documents, there's financial policy, exchequer's handbook, things like that. Um, can you talk a little bit about those documents, how they're put together, what they cover? Yeah. The kingdom writes its own financial policy, but it also has to go along with the SCA's governing documents. And then the SCA version of the Exchequer puts out a handbook that actually goes over in detail a lot of the things that we have to deal with. Um, sometimes you'll still find odd situations or things that could be ambiguous, but a lot of times if you'll go to the policy, you'll at least find a starting point. Um, I really want to encourage people to go and look at the Meridia's Exchequer page and the SCA Exchequer page because like I would talk to people who would quote something from a handbook and then I'd find out that handbook was 10 years old. It gets updated every couple of years. So like if you're quoting things and you're doing it differently than it should be doing but you haven't gone to even look at the newest version we try to keep everybody updated and say hey there's a new book out but we can't always catch everybody and some people have been doing this job for a really long time and they have forgotten that things may have changed since they did it or started doing it but yeah we have a lot of policy that you have access to if you are interested in don't know why you'd be interested in reading it if you aren't if you are already an exchequer but if you have insomnia you can always go read you know financial policy. Yeah. 
I would say from personal experience, I would also strongly recommend anyone who's planning on fighting in Crown to actually mm -hmm. read. That would probably be a brilliant idea. At least, at least financial policy. Yeah, at least be familiar. Yeah, financial committee members and I think group initials should also read them. But again, please go check for the latest versions of things before you start making decisions. <laughs> Even the forms get updated on a regular basis. And most of our forms come from the SCA exchequer, not they're not a kingdom specific form. When in doubt, pull it from the SCA website. Katya, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Nope, uh, that pretty much covered it. <laughs> right. You two are really efficient. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> like it goes oh, no. territory, maybe. It, it, it's, it's a compliment. Maybe we've read our handbook. <laughs> there you go. Yay. That's I don't think when we do the centrum, you're so confident. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know it's not just one person making this, these decisions. And we know there's a financial committee for the kingdom. There's financial committee. Uh, lots of uh, shires and groups have uh, their own financial committees. Um, how does that work? How are the members of the, of the financial committee chosen? Uh, so financial committees, let me just open up with, can be found in chapter three of the Exchequer's Handbook. <laughs> if you want to go into your handbook, or... what we're going into here. But uh, as a general rule, they, the financial committee consists of the Seneschal, um, the Exchequer, nobility if you have them, um, and however many paid members the group decides. An odd number is always best, so you can't have uh, a tie. Um, and the financial is responsible for making the financial decisions for the group. Um, they write financial policy. Um, that policy can't be overridden unless um, their decision violates SCA policy, 501c3, or IRS. Um, and they also can't contradict any part or loosen any part of uh, SCA policy. They can make it more restrictive, but they can't loosen it. Um, only paid members can be on the financial committee and vote for approvals. Um, their meetings are open. They should always be open to the public and be very transparent um, and their minutes should be published. So the exchequer is not the, the sole decider of how a group spends their money. That really is the financial committee. So. And there is some flexibility for each group. You can choose every paid member can be a member of the committee if that's what your group wishes, or you can restrict it in other ways as long as you have an actual set plan. You can't just like put in your policy, it's going to be whoever we decide tomorrow. And right. <laughs> we have to actually lay out. And I, I think that, yeah, I think they also, you need to make sure that if you're going to do all the paid members of the group, just make sure they're well read because your financial committee really should know the rules and what, what the expectations of a financial committee are. So if they're going to do that, just make sure they, they're, they're competent. They've read the, you know, read the financial uh, committee's responsibilities. Before Oda jumps on to the next question, I want to get something out there right quick. So for the folks uh, watching at home, please come on with the questions. Uh, we're going to we're flying through our standard questions pretty quick. Um, then we'll get into the the uh, populist questions that we that we dug up before the show. And then about seven o'clock, we'll go into the questions that you guys have. So hit us with them. Give us give it to us in the comments. All right. Well, I'm going to jump in with the question that I'm sure everyone wants to ask. Uh, what's the craziest thing someone has tried to claim for reimbursement? Elephants for coronation, maybe? I don't know. And um, this could be either something someone actually requested or just something someone asked you about. I've only had one, and it was Harrison's trip down here to turn over everything, so I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've never, I haven't had, in my two years, I didn't have a ton of really weird things. I had things I had to turn down, like, no, I can't approve a hotel room on the way to Penzig. Uh, that's not how the policy at that time was written. Um, you know, or 
like things like that. But but nobody has been just completely. In fact, we have a lot of royals who don't even choose to get reimbursed at all, who just absorb the cost as part of their their own out of pocket. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's some weird stuff out there somewhere. <laughs> But I think we've done a really good job over the last few years of kind of training. Good job, Rudy. Royals about what they can and can't do before. Into shape. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I start. I did the same thing Cecily did, which was who took over, who I took over from, and she had put together a document what the royals should know that you get when you win, and then, and then you have a little consolidated version so that you at least have an idea of what to, to, to think about. Um, you know, we had some questions here and there about can we host royal lunches with the Shire or a barony's money? And the answer is no, you can't. <laughs> but, you know, those are not crazy question things. Those are eh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. I think our royals have been super responsible and super concerned about being good stewards of the kingdom. So they're not out there wanting elephants or purple peacocks. <laughs> peacocks or yeah. I haven't haven't had that be really a thing. Maybe in the earlier days of the kingdom when people were a little more willy nilly. <laughs> well, I'll try to be another willy nor dilly. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I'll, uh, one that's really great. I think before we used to have a whole lot of really crazy ones. I don't know any off the top of my head, but I think we used to have a lot of crazy ones, which is why we have the rules we have now, so that you can't have the crazy ones. Just like that. I find it odder how much stuff wanders away than I do what kind of questions people mm -hmm. try to get past us. Ooh, <laughs> like what? I was like, going to ask a little bit later about kind of the royal stuff, the kingdom stuff, and, you know, okay. stuff sticks around and some of it disappears. Right. I, I mean, so we can talk about that now. That's what I meant. I'm just, yeah. I had a curiosity. We can, we can come back to it later. It can be one of the ones you pull up. That's fine. <laughs> so what's the most difficult part of your job? Um, for me, it's a learning curve. Uh, you, you can only learn so much. Uh, like, you know, Christina would tell me a lot of things and then something would pop up and I'm like, I know she told me this thing, <laughs> but for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. Um, and you just don't know what you don't know. So sometimes the hardest part is figuring out what question you need to ask to figure out what you're trying to do, because you're not exactly sure what you're trying to do, <laughs> but you have to figure it out. So, um, and QuickBooks, also QuickBooks, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we love, but it again is a learning curve. Yeah, <laughs> to the learning curve. Yeah, the learning curve is kind of steep. What I ended up over time having trouble with is, as some of you know, I, I get to do things like you know co autocrat golf floors and <laughs> things like that. There is a a finite timeline. There is a thing you will accomplish in this job. It feels like you never actually finish anything. It just, you know, got that done tomorrow. Got to do some, something else. Yeah. There's no, there's no stopping point. There's no, I have done the job. Yeah, if you put down a list, it's I'm going to get to this this week, except I can't because I had to get to that, to that and that and that because that popped up. And so now right. I'm going to try to get back to, to this. But and then someone emailed me while I'm answering that question instead of doing the thing I said that, I was going to do. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly so it. over time, it gets hard to cope. For me, it got hard to cope with the feeling that I never actually finished. There was no accomplishment. <laughs> it just kept going. A lot of half-started projects. And, and it can get frustrating to want to really badly want to do a good job and put things in place and fix things or, or at least make things better, but feeling like you just spin your wheels. Yep. Just maintain just like something is always happening. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we're, we're not even having events right now. And this is probably the busiest office I've, I've ever held. You know, I've, um, I've done a lot of things and I hit the ground running 
and yeah, I hit the ground sprinting. <laughs> so I can't imagine what it's going to be like when all the events and stuff kick back in. Maybe it'll slow down. <laughs> well, that actually leads us, leads us really well into our next question, which is obviously things aren't quite normal right now, but for Katya, what what is taking up the mo most of your time and your energy at the moment? Um, and for both of you, what what did you find the most rewarding about the job, the end of all the difficulties? So at the moment, pretty much every thing that I am doing all re relates around the end of year report. Um, end of year report is March 15th, and pretty much every moment that is free to work on Exchequer stuff is finishing the end of year report. Um, it's, a, it's a big, it's a big report, you you know, because you have a tab for every group and it's an Excel document with, I don't know, 42 tabs. <laughs> it's big. So um, I think uh, the most rewarding part right now is getting to work with the people. There's some really great um, X checkers out there and I still haven't gotten around to meet all of them um, or to talk to all of them. And um, you know, they're out there, they're working really hard and helping them helps teach me in the process of, of figuring everything out, so. Well, I really felt that I was doing something important, something that the kingdom actually needs. Mm -hmm. um, frustrating or not, it needs to get done and, and, and being a part of that, it was actually important for me. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, and I enjoy working with the people. Mm -hmm. it, you have a lot of people trying really hard to do the right thing and support their groups and, and by turn support the kingdom. So I really enjoyed feeling like I was being useful for, for those backbone people. Yeah. That's really good. So, uh, Mr. Karachina, sorry, the word was up there. Um, you held the office for quite a, quite a while. What is one piece of uh, advice that you would give to the local exchequers? Please reach out for help. <laughs> if you're struggling, if you're having trouble, if you're not, something's not making sense, or even if you're just going through difficulty in your personal life, we've all been there. You know, go to your reporting deputy, go to the kingdom deputy. You know, please ask for help. That's what we're here for. And you know, maybe you, the, you may not like the answer you get, but we will do our best to actually help you do the job you're trying to do. There's no point in setting yourself on fire mm -hmm. to do this job. You know, we want you to be successful, but the only way we can do that is if you tell us what the problems are. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cat just let himself in. <laughs> well, apparently it's show off your cat time. Yeah, apparently it's it's a cat, cat visiting evening. He wants my water glass, but there's not water in my glass. Ah, That's I understand. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of our, our preset uh, questions. We're going to start pulling from some questions that I got from, from some former uh, Kingdom X checkers. You know, so they th throw you the, the not so softballs. I've <laughs> thrown one into the chat there for you, for, for you, Mr. Sorry, sorry, kind of sassy pants. Wow, gave you a little promotion there. Sorry about that. That's not really a promotion, it's sort of a sideways, but whatever. Yeah, it's an interesting promotion, but all right. Uh, all right. So one of the quickest ways to get kicked out of the SCA is to not follow the rules around group or corporate funds. Have you ever encountered encountered something that has to be reported to the BOD? Generalities only, of course. Um, I did not. The, the worst thing I might have to do is go up to the Society X checker and say, hey, we're having an issue with this group. We are working it out, um, that sort of thing. But we have never, in my tenure, we did not have anything like that happen. Um, like I said, you lose 14 cents. You're, it's not going to the bond. <laughs> they really don't care at that kind of level. But um, you know, we would have 
this group's having difficulty. Some of the Gulf groups lost their checkers because of the storms and they had to move, in which case we had to report up to the kingdom, the society exchequer that, hey, right this minute, we don't have an exchequer in this group, but we are working it. But I've never had anyone go to do anything that had to go up to the broad level on a financial standpoint. That's I good. said, most people try really hard. Maybe. None of us done with malice. So the next one we have is from Master Kevin, and it, is, and it is, is it okay for a branch to hold an event that doesn't make money? If that's yes. what their financial committee decides, absolutely. If that's how they want to spend their money. <laughs> we don't have a requirement to make a profit. No. Uh, we just have a requirement to try not to go completely broke. <laughs> <laughs> to be good students. Yep. Yeah. There, there have been, in fact, groups who chose to put on an event and absorb the entire cost so as to offer a free event to the attendees. Mm -hmm. As long as you have the funds and can make a case that you can support it, that's fine. As long as you can pay your bills out. Mm -hmm. That was the important awesome. part. So uh, my next question uh, also it comes from Master Kevin, but it also ties into I'm going to go talk with him. <laughs> his questions are great. Uh, so his question is, why does the crown react so strangely when someone goes up in court with a bag of coins to donate to the kingdom? AKA, why can't the crown touch the money? Don't, Don't touch, touch the money. <laughs> and this is another reason that the crown should probably read the financial policy, but. It, so all the money that comes in and out is tracked. It gets deposited. You know, we, we have to account for where it came from. We have to account for where it goes out. And I think in an abundance of caution, the crown doesn't need to be touching cash. They don't need to be even possibly accused of having any control over funds that they may have taken in and you know, forgot. And again, I don't know the roots of this, but I suspect it's from years ago <laughs> when things were a little more wild, wild west. Someone took some cash, put it in their pocket and went about their day. Right. Um, <laughs> and then how do you say, well, what happened to it? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> somebody handed you cash in court. How much was it? A dollar, you know? <laughs> So I think in an abundance of caution to make sure that the crowns are above reproach and that we are not worrying about undue influence, people being taken advantage of or, or anything like that. Uh, it's just safer for the crown to not physically ever have their hands on money. So even when I would take money as, so <laughs> when I was Ismay and Timothy's first chancellor, I would take money and then I would find someone else to count that money with me and initial off that this is how much money I was handed because I don't want to be thought of guilty as of taking money either, but I don't have the same power that the crown or the influence that the crown had. Can I ask a short follow-up to that? Sure. So if someone does want to donate, to the crown, say the travel fund or something like that, what is the most correct avenue they can do that through rather than handing it to the crown or maybe even the chancellor? Who should who should that go to? It should go to the kingdom exchequer, but preferably with some kind of tracking <laughs> mechanism like or something. <laughs> yeah. Two pushes, or if it's for something very specific, they need to uh, let them know that it's for something specific. Gotcha. The checks are always the easiest way to make sure everybody's on the same page, but cash is, is acceptable. It's just, it's best if you do it in public with witnesses versus backdoor <laughs> handing cash to someone. Although, you know, people throw money at you at the weirdest times. <laughs> That's true. Give them a receipt. That's why I came across the don't touch the money situation. I think it was uh, 1 a.m. At Divin, 
<laughs> and they're just randomly chucking money at you. <laughs> a very wonderful gesture. Really awesome. Not oh, what we did. Yeah. One yeah. <laughs> You, if you ever want to see a, go ahead. I'm sorry. But people forget things, and then we're like, "Oh, it's 1 a.m. and we're leaving. I need to." Right. Need to you. <laughs> Not a good idea. No, so what we're going to say. Everyone um, who is uh, entourage for a crown, the their their uh, chancellor should make sure that there's whoever's on duty has a receipt book with them. Mm. Uh, when I was chancellor, I always had a receipt book with me, and I gave whoever was going to be head of of retinue for that that event um, uh, a receipt book. I handed them out, um, and then you know every time I, ha I had the opportunity, I just pointed them at an exchequer. Give it to them. I didn't even have to be the kingdom exchequer. Give it to them. Tell them what it's for. They'll send it to who it needs to go to. Um, Any piece of paper works as a receipt. Just yep. not having a receipt book is not a reason. You can write it on a sticky note, but somewhere. Yeah, we have two parts that matches, yes, yes. Two parts. We learned that, didn't we, Katya? Two <laughs> um, So um, I'm going to slightly follow up on that with a, um, so what happens if someone wants to give money to, like, um, the Gulf War Social? That, you have to give it to the, to the Meridian that. Social. That cannot touch official account. Right. Right. Cannot go for the, if it comes to the Kingdom Exchequer, it becomes official money, and now you can't do that. And <laughs> that I believe a, fundraiser, a private fundraiser somewhere by someone who is raising funds for the Gulf War Social, it can only go that direction. And so. correct me if I'm wrong, part of that is because the Gulf War Social involves buying alcohol, and official yes. SCA money yes. cannot be used. SCA funds do not buy alcohol. No. And that's what I wanted to get out there. Awesome. All right. So it's from Mr. Cecily. Fundraising, what is acceptable? What fundraising uh, money can cannot go through the SCA account? How different types of uh, how the different types of fundraisings should be advertised. So we want to raise money for the Kingdom of Travel Fund. <laughs> we should have made her come on the show. <laughs> So you, you covered how, how, how you deal with alcohol. <laughs> so we have two types of um, We have internal and external. External are where you might raise funds like, we'll go do a demo for your Boy Scout troop, and the Boy Scout troop gives the group $100 or something like that. Internal is within the SCA, t-shirt sales, uh, fundraiser lunches, things like that. And for the most part, I mean, I wouldn't suggest illegal activities to raise money, but you know, you can have a car wash, you can have a bake sale, you can do it outside your house on Saturday, or you can have it at an event. None of that, none of that is restricted. Um, the only thing that gets weird are is lottery, doing a lottery, because it violates state laws in some. There places. are restrictions. Um, there are restrictions when it comes to um, donating to other nonprofits. Um, hold on, let me pull up. I have a document. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, when things like everybody puts in ten dollars and then one person wins the poll is still considered a lottery. Uh, <laughs> Right. Games and pants are illegal in certain states. And rather than getting involved with that state law problem, it's just better not to. You can. Um, this comes a lot when there are disasters, like, um, you know, people wanted to donate when uh, when Katrina hit or when the um, you know, when fires hit and stuff like that. So it's not so much uh, fundraisers as it is donations. Um, and if I ever get it to pull up, I'll let you know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we can come back to that. Go ahead with your next one, Oda. I'm Oda. Sure, yeah. Uh, this one, this one also comes from from Master Kevin. But uh, what makes <laughs> what makes SCA Inc. a 501c3, and what does that mean uh, 
for my local branch? And kind of as a follow on to that, uh, why did the SCA become a 501c3? Well, he would probably know that better than we do. So <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> So the follow one C3 means it's an educational non not for profit. We are not a charity in the sense of, you know, St. Jude, where they are taking money for medical stuff, but we do have a not for profit status, which means we don't have to pay the same taxes as a corporation would. And I would assume that's why they did it back in the day. Because you know, when you're handling money and money's coming in, money's going out, then the, the IRS wants their cut. <laughs> but we're not a business. We are in the business of making a profit. Mm -hmm. So uh, what does that mean for the local branch? Technically, all the local branches are just part of the larger overall SCA with some other exceptions, which like Europe and things like that. Um, so I, 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 just by existing and doing demos and things like that, the local branches are supporting that educational mission that we fall under. I don't know that it has a huge uh, caution. I think yeah. the biggest thing in effect is how we can raise money, how we can, um, who we can give money to, um, how we fundraise, that kind of stuff. Which is all in the policy. Right. Your exchequer's handbook. <laughs> Policy. You know, when you say that, we have to drink again. <laughs> that might be the point. <laughs> I, I I had it. Mm. I'm trying to give it back. All right. Seems uh, like a. Oda and I are swapping off Kevin for, for Cecily. So I'll go to the <laughs> Cecily question. Uh, comping people in, comping people into events. Who can and cannot be comped into, a, into an event? So it has to be a defined thing to comp a group or a thing. You cannot say we're going to comp all people who show up at one o'clock. It has to be like we're comping the teachers for this, they're scheduled to teach at this event. Um, you know, and it, they have to be, there's something about members unless your event is free entirely. Um, but yeah, to actually comp a, an event, you have to define it. It has to be a known number and it has to be something you can explain. You can't just be my friends. <laughs> Can't just be all women because <laughs> you don't know how many women are going to show up at your event. <laughs> but you can, in fact, comp like the Royals. There are four <laughs> normally. Uh, you can comp all Royals from the known world because that is a finite number that you can actually define. Just realized. <laughs> oh, you have a cat on your head. <laughs> There's a cat on my head. Sorry, the cat distracted me for a second. I'm getting that's it. fair. <laughs> and our uh, tech team posted out that Welcome Home and the Newcomers Fund that reimburse newcomers do it by reimbursing the newcomer directly rather than trying to work through comping them into the event. Right. Yeah, they. They're, therefore, they get around the concept of comping and not having a defined number by just reimbursing the person directly. So, I mean, there are ways to work within the system. <laughs> oh, sure. And, and I've seen it where, you know, where groups might say, you know, um, we're going to, you know, the, for example, the Knights might say, just let us know how, how many people will uh, show up that are going to be fighting in their very first tournament and we'll, we'll pay for all of them to fight all of them to show up and all of them to, to play. You can, as an, as a private individual or a group, not an SCA group, but a private individual or, you know, private group. Or group of people, um, decide to pay for any number of people to, to get in or say, I'll pay for 10 new people on my own to show up. Whoever shows up to, to fool's war first, the first 10 new, new people, you know, I'm going to pay for that. You can always do that as a, as a private individual. All right, so um, my next question, 
also from Master Kevin, I think. <laughs> I'm just running through these. Um, but why should a local branch or the kingdom have more money than it costs to reserve their next event site on the books? You might have a non-income earning year like COVID. Um, you know, it's, it's not something we've planned for, but it's probably a good thing that everybody had the you know, amount in there. You never know when something's going to happen. So you can have more money than it takes to run an event. Um, nothing says you can't have money in your account. We don't earn money for profit. If it's written in your budget and you have, you know, things line itemed in your budget, then it's perfectly fine to, to have that much. Well, you know, when you hit the water main at the event site and end up... <laughs> I'm going to buy a trailer. Yeah. <laughs> or so you cancel your event and you don't get your money back uh, for whatever reason. Right. So it's, it's just like your personal account. It's better to have a little bit of a cushion than be running right at the line. You just, like she said, you don't know. And I guess it's always good policy not to spend money you don't have. <laughs> always. Or don't have please, yet. Please, please, yes. <laughs> right. Curious, Sheena was aiming that water main court statement right at me. <laughs> was, was, I, I, thought she was, I thought she was talking about that MGT that, that Bart ran a couple of years ago. That, uh, that was actually the one I was referencing, but there's also some other water main issues. <laughs> it's Apparently, long 10 stakes, guys. Long 10 long stakes. Long 10 stakes. Make, make sure there's not a water, water line around when you're doing that. No matter what <laughs> people say about it. In Bart's defense, I seem to remember that there was not an up-to-date map of the water lines on that site. Yeah. They assured us yeah. there were not water lines there. They didn't even know there was one there. But if you have in the contract that you will pay damages up to a certain amount and then something happens, you need to have that money where you right. get access. Right. Absolutely. Because things happen. <laughs> things so we... We kind of covered this earlier, but I want to make sure I want to make sure it gets out there explicitly. What are the ex the acceptable ways to accept money, and when do you issue a receipt? Always, always issue a receipt. <laughs> um, uh, cash or, che or um, check your money order. I mean, you can you can take cash at the the uh, gates and stuff, but if it's for something, um, if you're mailing something, preferably, please do not mail cash check or money order so. <laughs> and if i got something in the mail where i could not give you a receipt at the time you know mail a receipt back it, it, it even just sending an email to document that you receive the money is something absolutely leave a paper trail yes yes and, and that's if you are accepting money for any reason please please give someone a receipt or an acknowledgement that you've received it and what it was for. And sometimes that goes to a bunch of people. Like somebody gives it to somebody who's going to this event, who gives it to somebody else who finally hands it to the kingdom next year. Yeah. You know, it's nice to make sure you ended up with what person A actually meant to give you. Yeah. Um, not that I'm accusing anybody of anything, but when it goes through multiple hands, mm -hmm. things can happen. Right. right. Just, um... So we have it out there unless it's changed. And if it does, I don't I, I don't know that it has. And I'm sure you or many in the comments will correct me. Kingdom Law, I believe, still says this is not referring to exchequers, by the way. This is just referring to for general purposes, people at events. If you are doing a fundraiser lunch or anything, anything five dollars or over gets a receipt automatically. Good. So this next question, again, from Master Kevin, him and uh, Mr. Cecily had a lot of questions. We're out of the Cecily question. Because they've done this before. I'm almost out of Master Kevin uh, questions. I think we've covered. These are trick questions. They've done these before. <laughs> yeah, right. They know what to ask. Uh, Make so this is kind of about local exchequers. And he asks, why is there more paperwork involved uh, if his branch writes a check to another SCA branch versus writing a check to an event site. So essentially what is transfer of money um, within the SCA and why do we track it? 
so you're donating from a 501 in, internally to a 501c3 there's always a lot of paperwork when it when it comes to inside your own branch if you were giving it to someone private it's a very simple single line here you go i gave this money to someone um when you do it inside the group there's there's a lot more um places you have to account for that money you have to account for it from your group to that group um uh, yeah, just it's just more paperwork. <laughs> it's definitely more paperwork. Um, yeah, what is an expense that goes outside the SBA? We don't really care necessarily what that person does with it. Whereas, you know, here I need to show it left me, and she needs to show it came to her. Mm -hmm. So there's just a little more paperwork. Have to balance out. Yep. Yeah, that's also part of the fun report at the end of the year. Where you have to account for everyone's transfers and everyone's receipt of those yeah. transfers at the end of the year. Fun, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, Master Kevin really loves you guys. Um, no, Kevin. No, Kevin. <laughs> he, he's really ha uh, hammering <laughs> you guys down on this. Um, so, it's our group's money, right? So, if we vote, if we, if our group votes that to loan the Baron $500, $500 so he can get his car fixed, why should anyone else care? It is in fact not I have a feeling this is a story that Kevin Kevin may share with us at some point, because this doesn't. This is rather specific. <laughs> That's what we have, Baron. <laughs> as, as an official account of the SCA, it is the SCA as a whole's money, not your group. Yes, all of the uh, money belongs to the SCA. Which is why they have to do the taxes and yes. not each individual group. Yes. <laughs> Your group is being a good steward of a portion of their fund, of their money. So. <laughs> I feel like we need a tagline. Think of the Seneschal. Sorry, <laughs> think of the Exchequer. <laughs> Keep kidding. Think of both of them. I mean, think of the Seneschal too, definitely. I need like a Smokey the Bear thing, but with <laughs> Exchequer. Hey, we ask Kevin which job he's filling right now, so we know where this is coming from. <laughs> I know. You might want to go check that group's uh, activity. <laughs> I know their, their ex-checker. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we've just about covered all of it. I'm trying to see if there are any others that we've missed from... From Ke Master Kevin. <laughs> we already talked a bit about financial committees. Um, let's see. I think that was that was what was left. Um, if you want, we can go straight into the straight into the populist question, the uh, live feed questions. Yeah, I mean, I think everything else here we we've already covered. I mean. We've talked about oh. financial policies. We've talked about financial committees. All right, I've thrown the first one into the. I've thrown the first one into the private chat. If you want to go ahead and knock that one out, then we'll move sure. right into the, right into the populace. Uh, sorry, the the live feed questions, for all the fun that they're worth. <laughs> so our first one, our first one comes from that Jess posted, which was the great financial policies. You wanna you wanna hit that one. Yes, I do. Right. Um, We've got more to say about that. Absolutely. So the question is, what needs to be in a branch financial policy and why do we need one anyway? Because we recently discovered right before I stepped down, some of the branches didn't have their own financial policy. Oh. So I uh, actually had a special uh, deputy work on that, uh, Mr. Sabella. I think she goes by Dean Sabella. I actually worked on that with us to try to get something in place. You have to have your own branch financial policy. It has to include who is going to be on your financial committee. Other than that, there's, it can be a little less, like you can just refer to the kingdom policy unless you're gonna restrict it even further, but you have to have one. It is not enough to say, we just go by the kingdom financial policy. Yeah, there's a few things it has to, that um, again, chapter three of your exchequer's handbook covers financial committees and what needs to be in them. Um, but it has to cover the composition of your financial committee, um, the terms of your financial committee members, um, timeframes and methods for your meeting, uh, reporting requirements, 
uh, there's a, the whole chapter is full of nothing but what's required on your financial policy and, and how to run it. Um, but you you have to have one because you have to know how your group is going to spend its money. You can't just helter skelter say we're going to go spend five hundred dollars on our Baron's car and you know get it fixed for him. So <laughs> you still can't do that. <laughs> Even without a policy, right, right. Um, so and, and so it's required, yeah, it's a requirement of society financial policy that all kingdoms and groups have their own financial policy. So even if we, we didn't want one as a kingdom, it wouldn't really matter. So <laughs> yeah. Understood. Well, I'm glad we Wait covered that. I did not realize that was such a uh, such a recent issue. I'm, I'm very glad we got that question then. So I guess we'll start in on the live feed questions. Yep. First one comes from Baroness Rondolin, and she asks if there's a background check involved with this office. Strangely enough, no. At the, just at the kingdom level. Right? No? Yeah. No. Yeah. As no. far as I'm aware, they do not do a background check on, on me, um, on you. Oh, I can't swear that the society didn't do something I'm unaware of, but as far as I'm aware, it, there's not one done. Not saying it's the worst idea, but <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of like it might be a good idea. I don't know. <laughs> But there is not a requirement for one, especially not at the local level. All right. No. So how often do you audit local groups' books? This is from Baron Pierce. Every two years or at changeover of an office. This is when it's supposed to be done. That's the goal. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> You guys mind a, a little, no, a little no. good night? I don't think anyone minds a, a good night kiss. Do you, do you want to say hi to no. oh. 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 you? Shiny. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's so cute. Just say good night. Fine. Can you say good night, buddy? All right. Dad. <laughs> we know what he wants. All right. Good night. <laughs> Poor little guy. I'm sorry. I apologize for the interruption. No. Nope. I think you're good. Get the one after after Pierce's question. Yes. So next question is, um, why is Tennessee so different from everyone else? Lord, who knows? <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm missing something here. Like. Is there a uh, subsidiary knowledge about Tennessee? I don't know. Yeah, Tennessee is a subsidiary, so they have their own tax laws. So, like, we have to do the um, the end of year report. We actually have two. We have Tennessee and everyone else uh, because they're a subsidiary. And it has to do with how their laws about incorporation and things like that work. Um, a little bit of inner uh, kingdom anthropology. Some kingdoms have nothing but subsidiaries. Every state or every barony or every whatever is a subsidiary. Uh, we just have the one, which actually makes it more complicated because we have one that's different than everybody else. Gotcha. Interesting. But that's also, it's Tennessee, they have to be. Different. That's why we say Tennessee always has to be different than everyone else, yes. <laughs> So I think that actually answers the next one too, which is from uh, Mittens, which is how do differing state laws affect the local governance of groups within the kingdom? For the most part, other than I think fundraising, uh, fundraising you have to watch for um, different states have different laws. Um, but other than that, the biggest change, I, I think the biggest difference we have is Tennessee, just who 
you, you just have to know what their what their rules are. Um, Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, because we, we all fall under the umbrella of the SDA as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's just that fundraising problem. Georgia's law is different than Alabama's is. Uh, it's just different with the seas, it's just different in Florida. Mm -hmm. Other than that, they're generally the same. Oh. So it's just Tennessee has to be the oddball, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just Tennessee. Love you guys. <laughs> Uh, I could feel a little, a little twitch there when she said that. I stray too far, I'll accidentally fall into this. Uh, all right. So um, next up, we have a question from Owen McConna from from Tennessee. <laughs> He's, he asked, with the transition to a digital process for reporting, does the Exchequer Office allow for group officers to submit manual forms anymore? So, yes, the answer is yes, you can submit manual forms. Uh, however, we are trying very hard to go digital, um, and having internet access is very important, uh, reliable internet access. And uh, I know that's difficult for a lot of people. So, in a pinch, Yes. Is that the preferred way of receiving them? Now, the kingdoms all went uh, to QuickBooks last year mm -hmm. at the kingdom level, and that was a mandatory move. Mm -hmm. But the local groups have flexibility. They can use QuickBooks or another program if they wish, but they can also still do the old, the old style. We still would rather you email them to us than physically mail us, you know, three or four inches worth of paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in the future, um, at the kingdom level, there it's likely that I'll write something and it says no more mailing in reports. Um, it's just, it's difficult to receive, like for us, at least, at least where we are, the mail is not liable. <laughs> so, uh, you know. And my mail was reliable except for a couple of groups who for some reason could not get Depends mail from me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe she did not get my mail. mail. So. <laughs> if you email it, you get an instant like, I received this <laughs> versus waiting for a week to even hear if it came in. Right. Right. All right, so we may have covered this earlier, but uh, Mittens again, or Mittens, Again, another one from the sorry, asks, how about people other than the royals requesting reimbursement for odd things? I had a lot more fun about the stories about Gulf Wars and weird things that I didn't thought. Okay, Gulf Wars is good. <laughs> or somebody wanted to bring his emotional support for it. Uh, <laughs> Did you say fair? Fair. Yes, not wombat. Wombats are allowed. Does that say no what you're talking about, Ferrets? Ferrets don't really make noise if you just keep your mouth shut and shut them in your bed. But, but um, I, I don't. So when I had got money, for instance, as a lot of you know, you can donate your hours at Gulf Wars to get money to specific people or group, not people, but offices. So like, our children's officer, our minister of children got donations. Well, anything that she can make a case she needs for her office, I don't have a problem with that. She wants to buy 1,200 purple crowns for kids to color. Well, fine. She wants to buy banners to put out for her office so kid, people know where to take the kids. You know, that's fine. We don't have anything in Kingdom Law that says you cannot spend money on things like that for your office. So, I mean, I had some interesting reimbursements, like especially with the Minister of Children, you know, need to buy 1,200 popsicle sticks. <laughs> but no unicorn, I don't think unusual. <laughs> uh, we have a couple other groups that have their own funds. 
the mod have their have a fund that we hold. Um, there's a Herald's fund for some of their stuff, and you know, for the most part, unless they're asking for things that are outside kingdom or financial policy, like alcohol. As long as you can make a case that you need it, it's kind of like the IRS. If you're a stripper, you can take glitter off as a business outfit. As long as you can have an actual case. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Totally. Case Mark needs a second career. <laughs> I'll I'll let him know that you that uh, that he can deduct um, he can deduct glitter. <laughs> Katya, do you have anything else to add to that? No, I, like I said, I've, I've been in this just long enough to have, I think, three total reimbursements. <laughs> Too much of it during COVID times. Yeah. So, it makes things uh, different. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? This question is also from o Oin. Is, is it Owen or Oin? Ian? 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 I don't know. I, I feel like I should know how to say that. I've always seen it written. I haven't had to say it a whole lot. It's one of those. I'll have to ask him. Um, anyway, he asks, do you prefer Reeve or Exchequer? And please explain. I try to use Exchequer because society uses it, but to be honest, I hate to use Reeve so much that in my a lot of my emails, I'll, I'll use Reeve. Uh, I try to stick with just one thing so that people don't get confused. Sometimes they think I, I had one group email me that their read wanted to do something, but their exchequer said no. You're like, <laughs> so you're the same person. Yeah. So there's just confusion when you have uh, multiple names. I prefer if we, you know, try to stick with one. And since society uses exchequer, I use exchequer. Yeah, if you just say read and then they go to the society page looking for stuff and they can't find the real page. Yeah. With so, yeah. Nitty points out that, that, that it's pronounced, ready for this? Owen. O -W -E -N. Oh, it is Owen. Owen. That was one of my guests. Owen. <laughs> I like Owen. He should write, he should spell it Owen. <laughs> Or at least my friends, because then I wouldn't. We wouldn't have this horrible this pronunciation butchering. If we if we sound flipping about. We're not flipping about. We'd like we'd like to pronounce it correctly. That's Absolutely. difficult. Right. Yay me! I get a Stephanie K Kayla Floor question, a Pixie question, which is: Is there any scenario in which I can get reimbursement for an animal of any type? No Pixie. No pixie. <laughs> Wait, a stuffed animal? Wait, let me think. No. <laughs> you not can do a stuffed animal, a paper animal. <laughs> she does say of any type. <laughs> Maybe a stuffed animal. Now, I know she got a unicorn. She did. Uh, I think we could work it into an ANS project somewhere, but. <laughs> no pixie. <laughs> No. Blanket, no. <laughs> she does not. John, we have a correction on Owen. It's not Owen. Jan pronounced it as like John without the J. So it's on. On? Okay. On. Wait, who? On. Did he actually step in and tell us? He actually stepped in and told us. Okay, okay. All right, we'll get it right, buddy. On. Oh, there's going to be another show, which is going to be how to pronounce Gaelic names. <laughs> that is what we will do next. I have a song on that. <laughs> how much? Uh, how many when, more? When we do the Herald show, I'll make sure it gets played. <laughs> the Herald show, by the way, will be in the second batch of uh, of officers shows. Huh? All right, that takes us to the end of our uh, live feed questions. So we're spot on time. You guys are actually running a minute ahead of time. And we've gotten through all the questions, which we've never done before. So efficient. Get a minute, Get another minute in. <laughs> Imagine that our X checkers are precise to the moment. <laughs> and we should be very grateful for that. We are. We are. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I guess the next thing is we're uh, we're asking if anyone has any shout outs, other shows people should watch, uh, other people doing great things in the kingdom that we should point out. I'm just grateful for everybody who's trying to keep us active and together and engaged. Uh, I'm not the biggest user of the electronic SCA versions, but I really appreciate that they're there. I've been excited to be able to listen into classes in multiple kingdoms, and well, I go sit into the Calentir Bardic sometimes on Friday nights. You know, I listen to Calentir sing, and I just really appreciate all the effort that people are putting into trying to keep us you know, a tight, close family. Yeah. My shout out to the ex-checkers because, uh, you know, they're, it's end of year right now. They're they're still turning in reports and, and I'm also trying to get them to go digital. So I, I'm they're uploading files. They're, um, you know, getting used to a lot of technology that they're not used to. So um, I'm asking them to go a lot of different directions and they're doing a really good job. So. Yeah, I would... Uh kind of follow that up with a, a little bit of a more expanded shout out to the crowns and their entire team working on trying to come up with plans for people to start back at things safely and trying to juggle the responsibility of you know, an, organize, an organization like the SCA and you know in the times of a pandemic and just it's appreciated all the work that, that all of you are doing. And that of course includes you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The SCA is full the SCA royalty is SCA and, and, and all is full of royalty that have been, you know, the forever crowns of their kingdoms at this point. You know we think it's rough. Um poor West Kingdom only only has four four month reigns. So this has been like, you know, this is closing on on three full reigns for, for Uther. Not that I'm going poor Uther for anything, but four, three full reigns is a bit much if you're not used to it, I'm sure. So I've got a shout out. I got a show and tell shout out. Don't think this is going to be weird. I've got this really cool woven belt that uh, Mr. Karis Gina made for me. It's awesome. It's got cool uh, virtues uh, woven into it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, you do a lot and, for him, and I wanted to be something to say I appreciate it all. It is very awesome. beautiful. It is gorgeous. Um, so thank you for that. Um, also, uh, I'm going to throw um, some love out to Cal Barter in his in Cal Barter's corner and Ask the Knights Live um, for the shows that, that they're doing. Uh, as always, we give credit to Between Two Peers because we are an affiliate. By affiliate, I mean we stole we stole blatantly uh, with permission ish sort of their their drinking game. Um, so we like to give. Uh, um, Mr. Chassis Seamstress and uh, Sir Danger Muppet, uh, credit for that. Um, also, uh, if you get the chance uh, for the for the for the fighters out there, Coach's Corner every Friday night uh, with Duke Bronos, um, often with uh, uh, Viscount Tristan uh, and uh, a few others. It's really worth the watch, uh, even if you're you're not uh, even if you're, you're not able to fight right now or you're you're a little burned out on it. Just some of the, the breakdowns are great. Um, and then once a month, they also do a, a, a fighting breakdown show and um, with Duke Sean and Duchess Helga and usually a couple of others. And those are really eye-opening. So check those out. All right, so uh, last chance. Anything that you really wanted to cover tonight, cover tonight that we missed or didn't go over or didn't get to, or you're like, how in the hell did we get here? And you didn't cover this. I, I mean, other than send in your damn reports. <laughs> send in your reports, volunteer for a job. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I want to shout out to, to Mr. Cecily, who was my predecessor. He still kick it in whenever advice is needed or help is needed. And despite Master Kevin's long list of questions, he actually also helped answer questions and do special thing projects and such. So this office would not run without the multitude of people willing to help and take on 
even small projects can unload a lot off your shoulders. So, yeah, really yeah, for those two, Master Kevin actually talked me into this. And, uh, Mr. Cecily is my emergency deputy, so <laughs> they don't really ever quit. <laughs> they just keep going. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I missed it in my in my shout out, so I'm going to bring it up now. Um, the homecoming social uh, this coming Saturday. Um, go to the Kingdom uh, Kingdom Rudy's discussion page. There'll be a, a links and stuff up there. Um, Mr. Allen does a, a, a wonderful job with that, and uh, she'll have stuff there. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, with that, I think we're about ready to uh, to start wrapping up. So yeah. Thank you so much to Katya and to Christy, um, and of course to our support crew, uh, her ladyship Jessica of Osprey, Mistress Adriana, uh, Her Excellency Katarina, Lord Kikuchi, and of course, most importantly, everyone who tunes in to watch. Also, thank you for having me on the co host. It's been really fun. It was like I was going to sneak that in right right now with a special thank, thank you to uh, kind of sassy pants. Um, for, for joining us to, tonight. It's been wonderful to have you with us. What, what was that, Christian? Special appearance by prongs. Yes. Yes. Special appearance by, <laughs> by, by prongs and a, and, and a quick cameo by His Excellency uh, Barty McBart Bart. Um, so uh, join us next Monday, March 8th, for the uh, next show in the series, uh, which is Kingdom A&S. Our guest will be Mistress Uniman, Mistress Gwynvin, and Mistress Adriana, where we'll cover what happens uh, in the Kingdom Arts and Sciences office and how that runs. Remember, all shows, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. So if you're watching live, give us about five minutes for a break, and then feel free to just join us in Zoom for the after the show. Um, there should be a link coming up in the live feed in the comments on Facebook. And we'll hang out and chat for about a half an hour. Uh, I believe Dr. Katarina will post it now. Now, now it's yeah. Now it's we'll be we'll be there about seven thirty. All right. So uh, finally, if you're watching the replay on live or the replay on YouTube or on Facebook, so on YouTube, then smash the like and subscribe button down here in the bottom corner over here. Yeah, there's it. Over here, it's reverse, right? So. Over here, smash that like and subscribe button. Get your notifications. If we get 100 subscribers, then our our name goes from you know from this gobbledygook to youtube.com forward slash down and stack. So that'll be neat. But we're only at like 25 subscribers, so get out there and hit subscribe. Uh, on Facebook, up here in this corner, uh, hit like and follow, and you'll see when all we're every time we're doing videos. And that's it. Um, this is where we say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night everybody. Good Thanks for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. Thanks. Wow, we're out. And if I die in battle, tomorrow I'll be home. Though it's 70 days march to there from Rome. But a soul travels swiftly on the night wind. And if I die in battle, I'll be home again.